Hello everybody, we're going to go ahead and enter a very cool game where I actually got trolled, but it turned out to be the most beneficial trolling ever. Um, this is the first time that I've actually been happy about being trolled. This is the troller, who is the, actually a very helpful and very skillful Zerg. Um, I literally just popped into that um, throughout everybody's like, public battle net channels things that you have on the right when you go to uh, add channel. You can go into Zerg strategy, Protoss strategy, Terran strategy. I went into Zerg strategy just trying to talk to some guys that was in there and say, hey, I'm making this, can you guys help me out? Um, play me, ask questions, whatever. And so I ended up playing this guy Imperius. And he is actually a really, really high master Zerg player. He's 1,200, 1,300 points masters. And uh, he's on a smurf right now. And uh, so he's listed as platinum. So I'm like, oh, cool. Well, so we're going to play this, and hopefully we can go ahead and get some cool things to happen and allow for a good video to be made, and it's going to actually occur. So I'm going to do everything from his point of view. Uh, talk about the Zerg aspect of the game, because he's going to go ahead and exemplify, exemplify a whole lot of really, really, really good Zerg just general skill points. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at what he's going to be doing, and I'm going to go ahead and just talk about Zerg through ZVT. You're going to see scouting, you're going to see good army control, good harassment, good thought processes, seeing the openings and taking advantage of them, and being awesome with Zerg. I'll pause it occasionally and say that, hey, there's this last way that I really want you guys to focus on, and it's pretty much going to be stay alive. When you're Zerg, uh, I'm also going to try and make this a little bit more lower tier level. Um, in terms of what I'm going to be talking about. So first, we do see him going for a hatchery first. This is for a high economy build. Basically, this is saying, all right, I'm not fearing a hardcore cheese or pressure uh, coming from my opponent, so I'm going to go ahead and go for as much of an economy as I can. I'm not going to go ahead and try and destroy him early game. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and really just stabilize. No matter what he does, I'm going to stabilize right after and continue getting drones. Because that's what you want as a Zerg. You want drones, and you really want to be able to macro. Um, because that's what Zerg is. You are a macro race. You are uh, weaker units that you need to go ahead and uh, control really, really well uh, because they're going to go ahead and die quickly. And that's bad. But if you have a lot of them, it won't matter if they die quickly. Now here you can see that he does have a drone in my base, he's just scouting around, and you can see this is a really big thing that he has. Vision of what I'm doing. He knows where I am, he's seen this gas. Very important thing to do is uh, see if your Terran opponent has gas. Um, at the moment, he's got this overlook and be able to run in and see what he needs to see. And if you take a look at my base, uh, this gas is incredibly important. I could theoretically be going for a uh, gasless fast expand, in which case Zerg would have to worry about a very strong and Terran economy. But as of right now, he's getting a, an extractor, he's getting his uh, drones to mine gas, and that's incredibly important because of metabolic boost. Uh, metabolic boost makes Zerglings incredibly, incredibly powerful, especially in the early game. Um, Zerglings at the moment are slow, they're weak, they have only 35 health, no armor, and they deal 5 damage per attack, though they attack semi-quickly. If you compare that to a Marine, a Marine is uh, 6 damage uh, per attack, he's got a range of 5, so we can literally attack a Zergling for a very long time before a Zergling can even uh, get up to close to the Marine, and that is a pretty dangerous relationship to have between the two starting attacking units of the races. But if you notice, two Zerglings pop out per each larva, um, and they cost one food for two Zerglings. And if you continue to examine this, uh, the way that this thing is, the Zerglings cost 50 minerals, Marines cost 50 minerals. And that's kind of an interesting dynamic that you have to realize. But once you get speed, you can really get a whole big surround on top of uh, the Marines, and that can actually increase Zerglings' effectiveness tenfold. So you do have to keep an eye on that. It's very, very important. So now, with Imperius and what he's scouting from me, is that I'm going for these uh, Hellions. I'm going to be pushing out with four Hellions and try to pressure his economy. This is a very fast, uh, sort of harassment-based expansion that I'm doing. So Zerg, as a response, you're going to see he has Roaches. This Roach Horn is incredibly important because Roaches are pretty much the anti-Hellion unit of the Zerg especially when you have creep on the field. So Imperius is uh, getting out his seven roaches, and you're going to watch how easily they deny this, uh, this little push that I'm doing. He's spraying his creep. Here comes the first roach. This is incredible. This is a possibly dangerous attack that I'm doing. So you can see right this moment that these Hellions be coming in. Zerg has these ten drones, 
and another um, is also one guy in that gas but there's another 14 inside his main base and if you look at the attack of these hellions they deal damage along this entire flame um, so when you get four hellions inside a mineral line they can easily attack every single one of these drones in that line and take them out so Zerg you have to be wary of that um, you have to know these units, know the relationships uh, that you have to go against and these roaches are the Zerg's answer to hellions uh, Lings will take a lot of damage uh, from hellions and you can see that the second I see the roaches I basically pull back but they do 16 damage, they're powerful, they're kind of slow moving, but one of the things you can do for roaches is get out this Galil Reconstitution, which is an upgrade that increases their movement speed, similar to the metabolic boost that is being researched right now for the Zerglings. Um, I'll show you exactly how much speed uh, the Zerglings will, uh, will get when you um, have that. But this is a very good thing that Imperius is doing. It's a very standard push. Uh, it's forced me to get Marauders. It's a very strong thing to do because early game, especially when a Terran opponent goes for Hellions, you have an opportunity to be aggressive because Marines and the small amount of barracks units that are going to be against these roaches are going to have a very hard time attacking with um, with these units. And actually, I'm going to make sure that this sounds okay. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Uh, yeah. So hopefully that'll be fine because I realize that the explosions are a little um, loud for me. So hopefully uh, they're not for you guys. Um, but still, now you can see the relationship uh, between these roaches and these marauders. It has to do with the range attack. See, marauders have a range of six. Roaches have a range of three, um, or four. I mean, uh, they got, that was a long time they only had three, but still, that allows these marauders to basically hide behind the supply depots and deal damage to the roaches, while the roaches can do nothing. Um, and that's pretty much how I defend that early thing. And roaches are allowing Zerg a lot of opportunities to be aggressive and keep me inside my base, allowing. Allowing Zerg to just be comfortable and drone. You can see how this is what I'm talking about. This is um, stabilization and getting out drones. Imperius only had, I don't know, was it around 30 drones or something before when I pushed in? Now, the second that uh, I was pushed back, this Zerg is allowed to drone up. You can see now 44 drones are here versus the 28 SCVs that I have. Two bases are out, and Zerg's even getting this hatchery. Um, Zerg relies on larva in order to really be able to get units, and that's an incredibly powerful thing to note because you have to manage the larva as Zerg. It's one of the hardest skills in this game. Um, it, it's complicated because of the fact that you can't be like Terran and just decide to cancel this Marauder and build a Marine instead. If you cancel a unit as Zerg, you lose the ability to have a unit. And that's really something that I'd be wary of because, let's say you get attacked and you just built a round of drones, well, you can't build anything besides those drones because of the fact that your larva gets bent on drones and you, uh, and you cancel them, you just lose the larva. The egg dies and it's all relation that you have to be wary of. And it's one of the reasons why people will get extra hatcheries inside their bases to allow for extra larva. This is also where queens come into play because you can vomit larva. This spawn larva, um, you use it for cost 25 energy and 40 seconds later on your hatchery, lair, or hive, you will spawn an additional 4 larva. Um, you can see this is the bar uh, before you can see it. Also under here with this progress bar, that's how long it'll take uh, until you get the additional larva. And it's incredibly important because normally hatcheries have a cap at three larva per hatchery of the max that they can have. So you have to watch about what units you build and when because you can die if you build drones at the wrong time instead of units. So now Hellions are going to see you running around, around the map. And you can see this is another key thing for Zerg is vision and scouting. If you take a look at Imperius, he's doing a great job of spreading out his creep earlier on, and he's got overlords around the base uh, watching to see if any drops or airplay are going to be going towards him, which is really solid. You can see that right now, um, he's got vision also of these Hellions that are just seeing there, which is kind of unfortunate for me, but still, it's something to be wary of. So now, um, all these roaches are still here. Notice that he didn't get any other units. He still has those original four roaches, because I did kill three, and he's just been droning since then, and now it's 54 drones to 30 drones. You can see that the lair is being morphed, and this is going to allow tier 2 units and tier 2 upgrades to come for Zerg. You can see, look how fast the Zergnas are now. They have a movement speed of 4.7, and the additional movement speed uh, bonus from being on creep. 4.7 is almost a double increase in speed, because uh, Zerglings start out with only 2.95. Now, the numbers may not mean a ton to you at the moment, but pretty much what that means is that 
they are going to be one of the fastest units in the entire game. Hellions move uh, at the speed of 4.25, and they're, they're the fastest Terran unit. But you got to be careful, uh, Zerglings versus Hellions. Because of the splash damage and everything. But, um... Let's just take a look here. You see second base out, lots of mining happening. It's all good and normal. Uh, but this is going to be... Okay, let's take a look at the Tier 2 for Zerg. You've got Tier 2 upgrades. You can get Attack Level 2, Carapace Level 2, because you can only get Level 1 if you just have a Hatchery. You can get Glero Constitution, Tunneling Claws for your Roaches, and Spire Attack, Infestor Attack, Nidus Attack. Those are some things you just have to be aware of as the possibilities for Lair Attack. So right now, Imperius is chosen, choosing to go for his Spire, which is great. Mutas are very powerful in ZBT. Um, he'll be able to go ahead, scout me, and deal damage to my economy, take out any outlying buildings and any um, other things that, uh, that he can really see as a vulnerability. And you can see that I did scan, so I know about the Spire, and there, that's why these turrets are up. This is something you got to be careful of, because turrets kill air units very, very quickly. Um, they also have a range of 7, while mutas have a range of 3. So you got to be careful of that, because you can go ahead and try and attack them, and you'll get hit before you can hit the turret. It's a little bit of a dangerous thing, plus... Um, oh, by the way, there we have... Actually, I'm going to rewind this, so you can actually see the speed zerglings in action. Um, because if they weren't speed zerglings, then these hellions would be fine. But watch how quickly that these Zerglings can go ahead and surround. You can see, even with uh, Hellions trying to move away, they're going to keep getting caught up to no matter what. So you have to be careful um, with the Hellions and how you control them. Otherwise, this will happen. Alright, so now Imperius is getting out another base, which is very good. He's going to be able to get out an increased economy. This is something you really have to do as Zerglings. That's expand a lot. Also, um, this is a little note about efficiency. The second Inspire finished, it's plus one air attack, and get out as many mutas as possible. He actually saved up his money, uh, his gas, in order to get out all those mutas and attack raids, upgrades at once, which is incredibly good to do. It... Um, it pretty much just... Oh, and also 15 drones in production. He just killed off those Hellions, and he knows no aggression come out, so it's an opener to build drones. Just watch as his drone count is going to increase tenfold. And uh, this is going to be really, really good. He can move around these guys and attack, and take a look at his vision right now. He's got vision of this base. He knows there's no third, knows there's no third over there either. He's got uh, all these overlords spread out for drops, um, and it'll, there'll be nothing that can catch him off guard at the moment. And that is what you want to be. You want to be safe. You don't want to get a stronger unit-wise Terran army to go ahead and push you, because then you will have a really, really high chance of losing. That was a free supply depot kill for him. He's going to pull back. He's forced me to bring uh, Marines back into my main base. And he's pretty much controlling the entire scope of the game at the moment. I am not feeling good in, in, uh, in uh, expanding or doing anything right now, which is why I'm consequently building this command center inside my base. And this is what this um, Zerg is forcing me to do. So now this third base is down. We've got spine crawlers down here in order to defend. This is a really smart thing to do. These are also great against Hellions earlier on if you don't have roaches. You can build a spine crawler or two and it'll force most Hellions back. But these are the anti ground uh, base defense building for Zerg. You can see they have a strong attack that they can do, range of 7. It's very, very good. Plus, you can actually uproot them and reposition them if you want to, uh, depending on the situation. So they're useful the entire game with how you want to bring them in. There are also Spore Crawlers for air defense, uh, if you want to go ahead and go for that. Spore Crawlers require an evolution chamber. Spawning pool is the requirement for Spine Crawlers. Also, you can see there are some Spine Crawlers in the main base over here just because of the possibility of drops. And they're in a very good placement because if the drops come down here, the Spine Crawlers will be able to attack them instantaneously. So now we have the muted count continue to increase. The plus one attack is there. And actually, even now, the uh, plus one carapace is being re uh, researched as well. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about upgrades for a second. Um, if you take a look at the mutas, normally they do nine damage per attack for that first attack that they do. There's a tiny bit of splash, but that doesn't matter for the moment. Um, the mutas does ten damage now because of that plus one attack, which is incredibly important when you think about the quantity of mutas. With, uh, let's see, there's 14 more mutas here. Uh, actually, there's 16 somewhere. Oh, there's the other two over there. So there's 16 mutas here. They'll deal 9 damage per normal attack. If you add the uh, plus 1 upgrade, all of a sudden, with these 16 mutas, an additional 16 damage is being done. So, 
that's incredibly important when you think about Marines. 55 health, they will get one shot, and plus there's a splash that goes against anything else, and that's incredibly important. Siege tanks with 160 health and 16 mutas dealing 10 damage each, hey, that's a one shot, except for the fact that siege tanks have one armor. So you have this big, big balance between attack upgrades and armor upgrades from your opponent, because if you get a plus two attack with those mutas and the siege tank still only has one armor, well then that becomes a one shotted siege tank. And that is incredibly, incredibly useful just to keep an eye on, because you want to constantly upgrade so you can have relationships like that and just deal more damage and force units like the medevac um, spend more energy healing so they have less energy that'll be useful later on so now let's take a look at the vision once again for imperius it's very very large it knows just about everything in fact the only um only bases and have active uh, scouting on is here but he's running around with his immutus and being very very active in fact i think they're actually going down there right now um Nope, they're not, but still. The whole point is, he knows exactly what's going on. This is what you need to do. He knows the arm competition that I have. He sees all these openings, and you can see that uh, losing a couple mutas, but no big deal. It's one of the worry worrisome things about mutas is that they are fragile. Only 120 health, no natural armor. One of, the, one of the reasons why you upgrade this carapace. Actually, let's talk about the reverse of upgrades right now with um, the Zerg. We'll take the mutas as another example. Mutas, no armor, 120 health, very, very fragile. Especially against marines. They've got this plus one attack allowing them to do seven damage per attack. Uh, with only a six base damage, this is literally an increase in somewhere in like the realm of 17 percent 15 to somewhere in between 15 and 20 percent uh damage increase with only a single attack upgrade if you get if they get the plus three doing nine damage that's a full 50 percent increase uh in terms of damage output that's incredibly incredibly powerful so you have to be wary of that and do things with your own uh links and mutas which is get the upgrades uh for armor because it will then do the reverse of the upgrades and basically with plus three armor zerglings reduce plus three marines to being as if it was the beginning of the game again and the marines and zerglings both had no upgrades but it's when you get the leading upgrades that they really really shine in fact a lot of games are lost because one player had plus three attack and the other player only had plus one armor plus one attack or something like that where um upgrades just end up turning the tide of the dps pool just so far against you that you'll end up losing. So you have to be wary of these kind of relationships and think safety. Fourth base is going down. Yeah, he, This army is pushing out and let's see what Imperius is going to do to handle this because this is a very healthy DPS army. Plus one uh, attack is there. Imperius has a plus one carapace on all these units. That's very good. Plus one attack. So the upgrades aren't too different. But here we have, uh, they're going to be showcasing a very, very strong uh, unit from Zerg, and that is the Baneling. Banelings deal a lot of splash damage, a whole lot of damage versus uh, a specific kind of units, the light units. Similar to Hellions. Hellions do extra damage versus light units too. But let's take a look at the Baneling. 39 damage versus light, but 22 damage normally. So what this means is that... If you take a Marauder over here, a Marauder is classified as armored, meaning it starts naturally with an armor. Marines are classified as light, which means they start out with no armor. But you see how this modifier in the bottom left says light, this one says armored? Well, these Banelings say 39 damage versus light, which means it'll deal 39 damage to the Marine, but only 22 damage versus the Marauder. So ideally, in this upcoming battle, you'd want the Lings attacking the uh, siege tanks, these, this Thor, the Marauders and surrounding the, the Marines so they can't micro, while the Banelings are just going to roll their way into the Marines and hopefully deal a ton of damage versus the Marines because that's what their main damage output is going to be really centered for. So we're going to go ahead and watch this as um, right now I'm being slow, sieging up, trying to be fancy. I've got the single Thor there for added options, but before I can actually set up my army, we're going to see this moving in and this huge attack is going to roll forward. As um, I was actually about to scan for the creep tumors a little bit late though. But now you can see this the decimation that's going to occur as the Zerg does the perfect, perfect attack. Muta's coming in to take out um, a whole lot of uh, everything. And 
it's been forcing me to call GG because that attack was handled perfectly. Notice the safeness of what Imperius was doing. He's a high, high, high Master Zerg, and he's really just showing pure safety. He's lost almost nothing this whole game. He makes me look like an utter fool. And I mean, I know I'm not the best at this game, but I'm not a fool when it comes to it. Um, if you look at the food count, uh, Imperius is re going into max, essentially. He's now 180-200. He's got 56 lings that he's going to reinforce his entire army with um, just because he's being so stable and so good this entire game of keeping me inside my base. So, this is just with layer tech, too. You're not even seeing the real hive tech units that are possible to have, which are just brew lords and ultralists. So, though that is um, another really good thing that we can talk about, but for now, I just wanted to focus on the fundamentals of this game, which is, look at these Queen's energies, 42, 28, this guy's got 51, and this guy's got 48. This is great. This means he was spawning larva incredibly efficiently, and gave, being the having, just basically having the capacity to produce every single one of these units while spending all of his money. That's something you really have to focus on is spending your money because it's a show of efficiency. You can get, okay, if you mine more and you spend it, you can produce more, which gives you more to work with, which allows you to um, do more across the entire map. And in a game of efficiency, every little extra thing you can squeeze in could win you the game. So this is me trying to be very broad about Zerg. I hope that helped, and thank you very much for watching.